So I had installed Anaconda before, but due to the tweets that I got on my social feed, um, Alexander Neto said that I should try Miniconda. So that's what I'm going to do. So I already uninstalled the Anaconda from my computer and I'll just search for Miniconda here. Go to install or download. I'll just go to the website anyway. Good to know where I'm getting the data from. So there's some requirements. I do use um, Windows 64 bits. So let me see what I will be installing. I kind of like working on the edge. So I'll just use this one Windows 64 bits. The latest version. And I'll just download and install. Wait for it to work out. So first of all, it's a huge improvement on size, about 70 something megabytes instead of the 600 something download from Anaconda. And just from launching it, I already have like a similar launcher that I had before. Click next. Of course, we always read this, right? Uh, but any, we should. I mean, we should, but yeah. I agree, just for me, nobody else is using this computer. Well, got another user, but they won't be any coding things. Um, just default. And I won't touch this just because the tutorial I uh, watched said you can just install without adding those. And actually, the first one says not recommended. I'm just starting out. I'm with this. Just go with the default and click install. Now it's doing its thing. If you want to know a little bit more what's happening, then you can show the details. So that was kind of quick, right? So let's next. And I don't want to read the tutorial nor this part because now eh, we go to the internet. Stuff like open a prompt so here, Anaconda prompt, Miniconda, something like this. Now, I want to change to my e drive because that's where I store my work like this. Now, I'll create a new di directory called the uh, Conda and I'll see the input. So, I'll have everything there. So, first of all um let's list what i have now so conda list i think gives the list of things that are installed okay so we can check here you can have more or less than this but let's suppose i don't have um jupiter install which is really what i want to have installed at the moment so to install Jupyter, I do conda install Jupyter. It's collecting all the packages, solve the environment, and it will install my files. So in this case, because I already had it installed, it tells me that everything is okay. So I don't do I don't have to do anything else, but I want to install pandas now. So I'll just clear this and conda install pandas. It gives me what's supposed to be installed and if I want to do it, so I'll say yes. It's downloading all the packages. Kind of cool. Works. I mean, really new at this. So I'm not sure if I'm doing it the correct way or not, but hopefully it will launch for what I want and intend to do. Let's wait a little bit more for it to install. It's going pretty fast, even though it's a 114 megabytes file that is downloading here. So let's see what happens then. Okay. Okay, so that's done. So let's see if now it runs. So say, say Jupyter Notebook. Boom, let's wait a little bit. Ah, there it is. 
it's actually working. So I got it here. And now I'm just going to open up a notebook that I had before. It's already downloaded, well, actually uploaded a notebook that I already had. I'm going to open it. Check it out. And there you go. So I'm just going to run it to see if it's working. Well, let's clear everything first. So view, kernel, restart and clear output. So I'm going to clear all the outputs and we can try it out. So remember we installed pandas. Let's check if it's working. Ah, it's giving me the version, so that's okay. I'm reading some CSV files. Path, I've got some country. I'm going to input those and let's check. Ah, of course, because on this notebook it's using relative paths. Where I'm stalled right now, I don't have access, so I need to use the whole path. Okay, so I moved the folders where I started Conda. Remember when I started Conda, I moved to my E drive to Conda directory. So I install things there. Now I should be able to read it. There you go. And I can get the data set info and everything is working as expected. So hope this helps you out on installing Miniconda and running the Jupyter Notebook in Pandas. Uh, let me know if you want to know more on the comments below. I'm just starting out with this Jupyter Notebook and Pandas and stuff. But I really think this is cool stuff that we probably should be learning every day. See you next time.